Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about top 5 programming languages for 2020. Now if you are following from a long time, every year I have been posting these videos about top 5 programming languages. So we did that in 2018, 19 and this year as well. But one thing I realize, what's the use of knowing the best language? I mean think about this, you are doing something, you are learning something and suddenly you see this video and then you want to know hey which is the best language so you watch the entire video and now you know okay this is the best language. But is it useful to you? To make this video more useful, I have a different approach. Now if you just want to know the top 5 languages, look at this time, jump there and you, can, you will know the top 5 languages. But now I want to focus on something else. Now think about this, when you want to know which is the best language, what's the purpose? The purpose is maybe you want to learn that language, maybe the project which you are working on you want to choose a language for that or maybe you are damn new to this IT world and you want to know which is the easiest language so that I can learn and implement. To understand this, let's understand the domain first. See for different domains we have different languages. Yes, there are some languages which you can use everywhere. JavaScript, right? I feel JavaScript is like a star. If you want to use a language, JavaScript is there. Uh, so basically for different domains we have different languages which are specialized for it. So let's start with domain and then you will understand which language to choose for your project. Now let me start with the, what you say, niche domains which is quite famous nowadays, machine learning. Now if you talk about machine learning and if you want to implement something, in fact we should start with data science first. See, data science is one of the booming field now, right? So if you want to uh, learn a language so that you can work in this domain, there are multiple options actually. We can use uh, R language, we can use Python. But then if you see most of the projects on data science, they are most of the courses on data science, uh, they will be using Python. Not because it is one of the best language for that domain, it's because it is one of the easiest language to start with. And fortunately, there are some libraries pre-built available so that you can use them. So in terms of data science, yes, they have so many options. R is also one of the option, uh, but I would say go for Python if you want to go for data science. And Python is amazing to use or easy to learn as well. The second one, if you want to work with TensorFlow frameworks, in that case, uh, there are in fact TensorFlow works with Python and JavaScript. Uh, luckily we got JavaScript as well. Uh, so again, we have a choice now. So either you can go for Python if you know it, otherwise if you, been into the web world before and if you know JavaScript then stick with that. JavaScript still works in machine learning as well. Uh, so that's the thing. So you can based on domains like if you want to work with uh, data science we have Python. If you want to work with TensorFlow we have two, two options. I'm not an expert in machine learning but my friend suggested who is wor working in machine learning that they are using these languages. The next domain which is very famous is the mobile domain. Now if you talk about mobile domain, every big company they need a mobile application. Every startup needs a mobile application. Every idea nowadays starts with an app. In fact, if you talk to, talk to your friends and they will be saying, hey, I want to be an entrepreneur. And when you ask them why you want to be an entrepreneur, because they, they will simply say, I can build an app. I know that's a weird way of uh, claiming that you're an entrepreneur just because you can build an app. Uh, see, if you want to build an application, it doesn't matter what your business idea is. Mobile domain, we have multiple platforms available, right? We have iOS, we have Android, and then maybe we, in future we'll be having some new OS. Uh, in this term, if you are specifically working on iOS, of course, Apple has their own programming language, which is Swift. Of course, you should be going for that. On the other hand, if you talk about Android, uh, so we have Android Studio, we can build native applications. Initially, people used to use Java, but now Google made Kotlin the official language or the first class language for, uh, for Android. So of course, people are preferring to work on Kotlin now. But then again, the problem is, if you have multiple platforms, you have to build different applications for each platform. And we were, we were looking for some cross-platform cross language. And that's where we got Flutter. Now in Flutter, which is a mobile platform, you can build an application which will work on all different OS. Now you can use it on iOS or Android. That's amazing, right? Now which language we have to use? So da Flutter uses Dart language. Now of course you don't have a choice. If you know if you know you want to get into mobile, if you know you want to get into uh, cross platforms, you only the only option you have is Dart, right? So you don't even need to learn Python. You don't you have to learn Java. That's quite simple, right? Uh, so that's how you choose. So we have talked about the niche technologies like machine learning. We have talked about the mobile application. What options you have? Now let's move towards the web world again, which is very famous. Uh, everyone want to build their own website, maybe for the corporate use, maybe for the personal use. In now you can write blogs if you want to write. Now for that you can build an application. 
web application basically. Now, which one you will choose? Now, see, even if you talk about web application, we have different types there, right? So we can build the entire application in one go, or you can create REST APIs, you can build the web, web services behind the scene. And then for that, you can build a front end. It may be a mobile application, it may be a Angular front end, or something like that, maybe a React front end. Uh, in fact, if you talk about the backend part as well, if you talk about the web services, in that also we have the new services, which is microservices. And based on what you choose, you will change the language. Example, let's say you just want to build a web application, which one, which one you will choose. Now the famous one is PHP. You know, so if you talk about the, the college courses, if you talk about the startups, if you talk about the ideas, if you just want to build a web application, the default choice is PHP. Now why PHP is because it's there in the college courses, it's there, uh, it's there from a long time. In fact, I guess 80% of the websites are built on PHP. That's the power of PHP. In fact, one of your favorite website, Facebook was built on PHP. Again, I'm not a big fan of PHP. Now, what are the options you have? Now, the other hand, if you are good with Python, so you have learned Python and now you want to build web application, the backend services, uh, you can use Python there as well. So we have amazing frameworks like we have Django, we have Flask. So you can use them and you can build web applications. So of course the option you have is Python. On the other hand, if you want to build enterprise level application, enterprise level web, web applications, uh, the best choice is Java. Java was the king earlier and Java is still a king when it comes to uh, web application, which is enterprise application basically. Now, if you talk about the microservices as well, the Microsoft's microservices world is dominated by Java, right? So we have certain frameworks in Java available, example, Spring Framework, which is one of the best framework available. And uh, so that's become the default choice, right? And if you join big companies, you know, if you join service-based companies, most of them will be working on Java. Uh, maybe, uh, I'm not saying it's one of the best language now, it's just that they are doing, they are using Java for a long time and they, no, they don't want to switch. Right. Even if they switch, I have seen some companies, they are moving from Java to Kotlin, but ultimately the base is still Java, right? So and it is easier if you know Java to learn Kotlin as well. So it's not a big thing. Um, so now let's move towards the enterprise market. We have talked about it. Java is dominating there, but then we have one more language, which is dominating the enterprise market, which is C sharp. Now, if you are working on the Microsoft domain, let's say on the backend side, on the server side, you're using Azure. One of the default framework you have to use is, is .NET. Again, you can use other languages as well on Azure, but uh, .NET is something is built by Microsoft and they're using it throughout. The choice you have now is C Sharp, right? In fact, for game development as well, if you are using Unity, uh, I guess they use a C Sharp there. So C Sharp is quite famous in the Microsoft world, in the Unity uh, gaming world. So you can use that. Now it's time for, again, a new technology, which is IoT. Now, if you want to work in IoT, which is booming now, you know, this year, I guess it will be the year for IoT and blockchain, of course. Now, if you're going for IoT, the options you have is C language. I know, I know, you might be thinking, hey, C is an old language, right? Uh, that's not the case. C is, is an old language, but it is one of the fastest language available now, right? So it's, it's fast, Go is also fast language, but then, C is mother of all the languages, right? So if you want to work on IoT, C is great language to use. Uh, you can also use Python there, you can also use Java, but I guess C and Python, uh, you can use this too there, which is, in fact, Go should also be, you. Go is one of the options. Now let's move to the, the, the technology which will change 2020, which is blockchain. I know, I'm talking about this for a long time, but then blockchain will be rocking this year. Uh, so. If you want to work on blockchain, we have multiple options. You can use JavaScript, which we can use Solidity for Ethereum, and you can also use Go. And we have not talked about Go yet. Now, Go is a language by Google, and it's one of the best language available as of now. Yes, there are other competitions as well, but when when you when I look at Go language, I see it as a complete language. You can use it everywhere. Now, see, if you talk about PHP, it's a web language, right? Famous for web. If you talk about Python, it is more famous for machine learning. If you talk about Java, it is more famous for the enterprise market. Uh, but if you talk about Go, it can replace all of this, right? So Go can be used on the web services. Go can be used for uh, embedded devices because it is fast. It's a compiled language. Uh, Go can be used for mobile applications as well. So it's one of the great language which is coming up and surely it will dominate in this year. So that's how you define. I know I'm, I have not talked about all the domains available, but then this is just an idea, right? So whatever company you want to join, now if you 
are a new if you are a fresher in the IT world if you don't know any language of course the best option you can go for is python there's no other choice you know go for python it's one of the easiest language to learn yes there is an option here which is javascript but the only problem which i feel about javascript is you know when you look at the language it should be more programmer friendly you know we talk about user friendliness but we have to also talk about the programmer friendly languages and i feel javascript is not that yes if you are working on javascript if you are enjoying it that's great but comparing with python python is more structured compared to javascript you can choose any of this the both great languages you can choose the between these two if you know you are looking for a job in the service based companies i would say go for java you know the inter in the interview as well they will ask you java questions so you don't you don't have a choice there as well uh, so that's the that's the thing so choose the domain and based on that choose a language don't just watch a video which is talk about programming language and they will say hey this is the first language you have to learn this it will not work for everyone that's something you have to understand and now it's time to give you the list of top five languages so let me just start with the fifth language in my list is dart now why dart is because we have talked about it right so if you are in mobile world and if you want to build cross platform applications you have an option of flutter and flutter works on dart so you can choose that the fourth in my list is go okay so few minutes back i was talking about go it's a great language and now i'm saying it's on fourth the reason is go is a great language but then when you create a ranking so if you talk about any video if you talk about anyone talking about top five languages they rank based on certain criteria uh, it may be based on the github repositories it may be based on the questions on stack overflow it may be the size of the community uh, it, so they consider all this part right and if you talk about go is a new language it will take some time for go language to evolve to to have multiple repositories on github to have a good support from the community go is lacking that so fourth on my list third on my list it should be first because i work in that language but it's on third line third number which is java i know java should be first or second because it's quite famous but if you look at the recent trend of java in fact i would say java slash kotlin not just java now if you look at the trend java is updating itself every 6 months it's a great thing right you are getting a new features every 6 months but that also a problem every time you see a language evolving that fast something is wrong with the with the thought thought process and it it even if it is good the problem is you can't upgrade every 6 months not even enterprise not even programmers but still it's a great language to learn in fact i see java 14 is going to launch right and companies are still using java 8 that's the thing with java but again most of the companies are still using it so you, you can't run away from it the second on my list is you can guess it right that's javascript i know i uh, i'm not a big supporter of javascript but then the way it is evolving the way we have number of frameworks available i mean think about javascript being a full fledged language you can do anything you want you can build web application you can build the entire web application from start to end you can build the front end you can build the back end with the help of node js you can build the database so right? it's so everything on, on in javascript uh given a choice i would not be using it but then it's it's working fine so why not and first in my list is python why if you look at the craze of python now everyone want to learn python not because it's a great language it's because it's the easiest language to learn and it's it's fun to learn right i mean think about this if you are new in the it world and if you want to learn a language of course you want to enjoy it you don't want to struggle your 5 to 10 days learning a language which is not easy i mean don't even try learning java or c sharp as as your first language i have a lot of experience teaching to non programmers uh, java is a first language and then i can see on their faces how they are struggling but on the other hand if you learn python if you learn python it's a great language easiest to learn and they enjoy it so and in fact we do have a course on python javascript java uh, go on this platform in the comments in the description area you will find the links for these courses so that's it that's my list in fact i want to point out one more thing if you see the stats uh, there don't just go with the stats in fact so, so many people talk about the uh, the the amount of money you can make after this language you know you can just go to this websites uh the job searching website and you can see the uh see the amount they are getting paid see that's not true not everyone so let's say if you say python developer will earn $1000 per per week that's not the case for everyone not every python developer is on that it all depends upon your skill set it all depends upon your experience there are so many things to be counted right so don't just go with the numbers go with your gut go with your domain and that's how you should choose a language So that's it from this video. I know it was lengthy, but I enjoyed talking about it, and I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comment section, and do subscribe for other videos. Bye bye.